Hi, I'm Marty Mosley, head of the Total TV Network. Several years ago, I read Dr. Ross Campbell's book, How to Really Love Your Child. It revolutionized the way I looked at my children. What an honor to have Dr. Campbell on this show. We also have best-selling author Dr. Kevin Lehman. As an expert in parenting, he's appeared many times on Good Morning America and the Today Show. There will be moments in this series when you laugh, times when you want to kick yourself for being foolish, and maybe moments when you just want to cry. Think of parenting like building a home. When you move into a new house, you experience a lot of joy and happiness. However, over the next five to six years, if your foundation was not poured correctly, you'll start to see cracks in the ceiling and cracks in the tiles on the floor. Those foundation repairs will be costly. In parenting, the first few years can seem easy. But if you haven't laid a proper foundation for your family, later on, relationships at home can start to crack. People can get hurt emotionally. That's why this series is essential. Parenting by Heart will give you the basic principles you need to raise your children with confidence. It can also help you mend those broken relationships or repair situations which have caused your family so much pain. Listen with an open mind. Take notes in this handbook which we've provided. You'll refer back to this book for years to come. If you need additional copies, just call our office. Now, on with Parenting by Heart. Coming up on Parenting by Heart. Sometimes I am, I'm really afraid that I'm messing up somehow. I think there's questions almost every day so that, that, that you're not sure if you're doing the right thing. If we did it wrong, how do we take back what we did? He doesn't understand that no is a word in the English language. He's stomping around the house. He's slamming doors. How do you teach them the difference between right and wrong? I wonder why what we've done with the other two children isn't working with her. I hate to admit it, you're never supposed to strike out of anger, and I did. The timeout stuff, it does not work. You will not sit still. Having to say it three times. Hurry up. We really don't know how to deal with it. That's where I'm scratching my head saying, what am I going to do? Hi, I'm Nancy Lowe. And I'm Ted Lowe, and welcome to Parenting by Heart. Ted and I are about to have our first child. In just 30 days, so we've been very interested in the things we're learning while working on this series. We have interviewed some of the most respected experts in parenting, like Dr. Ross Campbell, who wrote the best-selling book, How to Really Love Your Child. Also, author and TV expert Dr. Kevin Lehman from Good Morning America is on our show, and you'll be hearing from Christian family counselors Tim Smith and Pam Johnson. And, of course, we've talked to a lot of parents and we found out that your lives are hectic and parenting can be overwhelming. It's very busy around our house. It's always hectic. There's always too much to do. And I can remember a time when we could all sit down and have dinner together, you know, six out of seven nights a week. Sometimes I'll take our daughter to uh, swim team practice, come back home, work on supper, and go back and pick her up, and then come back and get supper on the table, and we eat. And now we're lucky if we can sit down at the dinner table two or three nights a week because someone's got practice or someone's got a ball game. Karate, ballet, soccer, basketball. And the minute I get on the phone, they're like, Mommy, Mommy, can I eat? I want this. Can I go outside? And everybody wants to get their share, their share of mommy, their share of daddy. We just don't want to wake up one day and find all of our time being eaten away by activities. I do feel drained some days, but I'm the mom. Moms are supposed to be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I can't imagine life being more tiring. Now let me take you right now to mid-America for just a second. We're on a cell phone. John, John, where are you? What? No, it's Tuesday night. You're supposed to be at Taekwondo. Tap dances Wednesday night. What? Dinner? I just pick something up on our way home. Goodbye. But it's crazy. I mean, I got a chapter in one of my books called Help, I'm a Cabbie and my minivan isn't even yellow. And what we've done in the name of this is good for our children is insanity. I find myself losing patience 
a lot quicker than I used to. They're constantly needing your attention and then it's like when Donnie comes home I expect for uh, you know finally a little break and it's, it's still not a break they're still mommy 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 I'm like go see your dad. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to get away from everything. This thing called parenthood is a little bit simpler than we made it out to be. There's some simple basics that you better do but you better do them really well. That's what this series, Parenting by Heart, is really all about, perfecting the simple basics of parenting. It's not about a thousand do's and don'ts. And these principles still work, even if you're a single parent or you're parenting within a blended family. So you will learn a few basics and learn how to do them well. You may even want to take notes in the parenting handbook we've provided. Dr. Ross Campbell said it begins with having the right attitude. There are three things you can do to improve your attitude about parenting. First, realize that your child is not an adult. Children do childish things because they do not think like an adult. Secondly, realize that children have the same feelings that we do. Emotionally, they are very similar. They experience loneliness and joy, anger, love, frustration, and all the feelings that we do. Third, accept your responsibilities of parenthood. And that means not to fight them. We don't want to complain about parenting. This certainly doesn't help. It's like throwing gasoline on a fire. Accepting this responsibility frees us to help our children develop and for them to give up their childish ways. Having the right attitude about parenting is essential. But remember, kids will act like kids, but they still have the same feelings as adults. And remember, it doesn't help anyone to complain about being a parent. What you want your children to know is that they are important, that you love them, but sometimes that's difficult. Love to me sometimes can be an emotional weakness, and I don't want to mm -hmm. display bouts of weakness. What I have trouble doing is finding the time to express to them my love for them. I don't know if they feel unconditionally loved because they should. It was one of those bad examples where we compared her to the other kids and said, look how good he's doing, why don't you do that? And she'll say, I can't ever do anything right, I couldn't do it, I failed. I but you realize it. When you see that, that child's expression on their face and their body language, you know immediately, I have not shown them unconditional love. The basic foundation for a solid relationship with your child or teenager is unconditional love. I say the words a lot, I love you. You know, and even that elicits different responses from different kids. Ready? Unconditional love means that we show our love to the child all the time, regardless of what our expectations of the child are, what the child looks like, the child's good points, negative points, and especially most difficult of all, how a child is acting. You love your children, that's a fact. But as Dr. Campbell said, you must show that love. Your love cannot be a reward that your child must earn. Love must be shown in spite of a child's behavior. I've worked with many families over the years and I've never met a parent who didn't love their child. I've met some parents who've had a great deal of difficulty conveying that love. The child is just not picking it up. Sometimes it's really difficult to show our kids that we really do love them even when they've made mistakes. Our love for a child is conveyed by our behavior towards that child, by what we say, by what we do. But what we do carries far more weight. A child is far more affected by our actions than by our words. Children who know they're loved, children who've experienced unconditional love, have a higher self-confidence. They will try things, attempt things. They're not so hard on themselves if they fail. So I would have to say unconditional love is the most powerful force in the world for influencing a person. Unconditional love sounds simple, but Pam Johnson said the children don't always pick up on their parents' love. Does your child know that you love them all the time? We're going to show you how to convey your love to your child. Ross Campbell uses the analogy of an emotional tank. Each child has an emotional tank. Now that's figurative, of course. What that really means is that every child has specific emotional needs that can only be met by the parent. It is only when your child's emotional tank is full of your unconditional love, your understanding, and your positive discipline that he or she can function at their best. Hurry up, we're going to be late. Tragically, though, and I mean tragically, most parents assume they naturally and effectively convey this type of love. 
Today we start letter S, and so on this page... With three girls, and I teach school, a working mom, and I'm around children all the time, all day long. Teacher this, Miss Randolph this, and they're tapping you, and I need this, and I want that. When we get home at the end of the day, Mommy is about out of patience. So when my own three children start in, well, I want this, and I want that, and I need this, some days it's very hard to tend to their needs when I've already tended to other children's needs all day long. Mommy, I need you to help me on my project. I can't help you right now. And one time, Tori wanted to tell me about something that had happened to her at school that was very important to her. But I was too busy, and then she burst into tears, and she says, you don't love me. That pitiful phrase, you don't love me, can tug at any parent's heart. Cindy does love her daughter, but at that moment, Tori just didn't feel it. As Ross Campbell said, most parents just don't know how to naturally convey their love to their child. So our experts have come up with three simple suggestions that will help us to fill our child's emotional tank. I think there are several things a parent can do to help ensure the fact that their child is picking up on how they really feel about them. The eye contact is so important because that tells a person, I'm paying attention to you, I respect you, I really want to know what's on your mind and how you're feeling. It takes no effort on my part or very little to make loving eye contact with my child. And I can do it almost all the time. They can be cl playing clear across the yard and I can wave and make that loving eye contact. Positive eye contact can be very powerful. On the flip side, if you deliberately withdraw eye contact from your child, they get this idea that somehow your love for them comes and goes according to their behavior. Now let's move on to the second form of filling their emotional tank, physical contact. I'm trying to learn how to be more uh, touchy touchy feely feely kind of guy. Probably the greatest challenge for that with me now is, is my son who I have to look up to to even have to get him to bend down for me to hug him now. I, I tell Kim a lot that I love her but I don't always hug her and hold her probably like I should. The physical contact is important. Children need hugs. They need pats of encouragement. Um, they need an arm around them. And even when they're teenagers and may act like they need less of that, they still need the encouraging hug and, and, and pat on the back. You know, there, there was a time two or three years ago when he went through a stage when he really wasn't into us hugging or kissing on him. He's at the age now where he doesn't hug me. I'm not allowed to hug him in public anymore. Anytime the child walks past me, I can tap in the back of the shoulder, back of the arm, go through their hair, uh, give them a light kiss, whatever. There's ample opportunity, and it takes no sacrifice. It's really easy. When I discovered that, you cannot believe what it did for me. Because uh, then I, I realized, well, I don't have to wait until bedtime. I don't have to wait until I have a special occasion where I can run up and hug him and kiss him. I can do it all the time with almost no effort. The first two suggestions, eye contact and physical contact, requires very little effort on your part. But the third suggestion, focus attention, it requires something that parents have very little of, time. When I'm working on my computer and I'll come up and show, Mia usually will ask if I'll read to her or something like that and usually I say, no, I, I gotta get this done. The struggle is balancing some of the demands from the work and that infringes on their time. I think I'm probably emotionally spent from the day working. And I do think inside that I'm not, I don't spend enough time with my kids. Bye, Daddy. Tatiana wanted to help me bake a cake and I really didn't have time to let her help me. I yelled at her. Um, I could see in her eyes that she was crushed. The sports news was about to come on, and right when it came on, she was wanting me to listen to her, I think. All I want to do is sit in the recliner and rest a few minutes. The Lehman family, the dinner table, and let that phone ring. Nobody picks it up. I can care less who's on that phone. I'm not answering it. That's our time to sit down, we have fun at the dinner table, and we talk at the dinner table. Families don't do that. We don't do that enough. 
children know where they stand in your list of priorities and it's not by what you say to them it's by how much time you spend with them that doesn't mean you spend hours a day especially as they get older they would prefer you didn't spend hours a, a day with them I know my teenage daughter when I try to have some time with her sometimes she's open to that and sometimes she really doesn't want mom around but at least a good 15 minutes a day where you check with them on how their day's gone how they're feeling what they're thinking share with them some about what's going on with you and you show them by by that kind of behavior and response, they're important to you, very important to you. Determining when and how to have focused attention with your child varies depending on your child's age. Pam Johnson gives us some examples. A middle schooler, let's start there. That's a tough age because they have one foot in the world of childhood, one foot in the world of adolescence. Why don't we go out and get an ice cream cone? Why don't we go see that movie you've been wanting to see when you know they're feeling down? Three or four year old children want very few words. They want lots of behavior and very few words. So you show unconditional love to them for the way, you, the, how you spend time with them. You're not always putting them off. Sometimes you sit down and say, this 30 minutes belongs to you. What are we gonna play? We're gonna play whatever you want to, even if that means sitting down to a teddy bear tea party, which you may not have any interest in, that's what they want to do. We'll be right back with more Parenting My Heart after this brief message. Try these simple things, I'm sure you'll be amazed. There must be 50 ways to say I love you. It's a pat on the back, Jack. Give him a hug, Doug. It's not just what you said, Fred. It matters what you do. Drop down on a knee, Lee. Listen patiently. That's all you gotta do, Lou. Tell him I love you. Just spend some quality time with your kids. A message from the Total TV Network. I believe in one God. And that Jesus Christ was his son. Who came down from heaven. Suffered and was crucified. And, and after three days, rose again. again. Whoever accepts this, no matter what race, age, age or, or color, color will, will be with him in paradise. Heaven will be a wonderful place. One God for all people. A message from the Total TV Network. Welcome back to Parenting by Heart. So far, we've discovered three great ways to convey your love to your children. But let's face it, it's easier when they're little. You can pick them up, you can cuddle them, and they think you're the greatest. But when your kids get older, the relationship starts to change. They may have a different opinion about their parents. I think parents need to make more time for their kids instead of always working, always going places. My parents treat me bad because I have a different opinion than they do. They're grouchy, like all the time. So it's easier, I think, to talk to your friends and your parents. They tell me because I'm a kid, I don't have any say-so. They just don't want to listen and they start um, arguing with me and tell me what I did was wrong and don't want to listen to what my problem is. The biggest problem I have with my parents is having them listen to my side of the story. He just blows me off and tells me what he thinks and he won't listen to what I think. I think they should just like, they need to listen to us more. It's hard to talk to my dad because we always get into a fight or an argument. They could just listen without getting mad. Let's look at the major complaint just mentioned, the breakdown in communication. Children don't communicate like adults. So instead of having that pressure to try to make our kids communicate like adults, let's just take the pressure off of trying to have effective communication with our kids and let's just simply talk and listen. When kids give ideas, even as strange as some of their ideas can be, if you say to them, oh honey, you shouldn't feel that way, you've just negated their feelings. And uh, so you need to really take the time and discipline yourself to listen intently to what's going on uh, in your son or daughter's life. 
you've got to be able to really hear what they're saying because sometimes a kid will just throw out a little fish to see if you're going to bite. Uh, they want to know how you're going to handle it. So if you're a parent that tends to be overreactive, then your kids are never going to tell you what's going on in their life. So listening to kids is really important. Take time to listen. Uh, not the perfunctory, honey, how was your day? Fine. Don't even bother asking those questions. We talk a lot and really dig. I think we really try to dig on what, not just, oh, what'd you do at school today? Nothing, you know. Well, what did you say to the teacher? What did, you know, what did that friend say to you? And he'll come home from work and he'll say, Brittany, tell me three things that I didn't know at school today. And, you know, I came, you know, I was home with her for five or six hours by the time he gets home and she'll go, my teacher wasn't there today. And I'll go, <laughs> <laughs> because I said, how was school? Fine, okay, you know, and he would sit down, look at her and say, tell me three things that happened at school today, and she would sit there and think about it, and I learned all this kind of stuff that I had. Can't be yes or no questions, you know, kind of. Sometimes they walk in the door after school, and I can just tell by the look on their face that something happened. And to capture that right then, how was your day, and a few probing questions, um, then it all spills out. And sometimes if I don't catch them at that moment, it's gone. There are many natural moments when you can listen and talk to your child. Do you spend a lot of time in the car? Here's an idea. Sometimes the best conversations that we can have with our children is when we're driving in the car and they're riding beside us because they feel like the situation is more equal. The nice thing about it is you're not eyeball to eyeball. Because if you're talking to your 12 or 13 or 14 year old adolescent about such things as sex, you'll find great pleasure in knowing you can look out the window as you talk to your son or daughter. As a parent, you may be doing a lot of things right, but remember, you're not perfect. You will make mistakes and your children will see you fail. The question is, how will you handle those moments? Listen as Mark describes a homework issue he had with his son. I asked him to, to finish it a certain way and lay it out for me. And I told him to lay it on, on the couch and I had, uh, at the time I had a couch in my bedroom and a couch in the living room, and I didn't look on both couches, I just looked on one. And so in the morning when he woke up, he was in trouble and he was grounded and he walked in crying a few minutes later and with it in his hand and said, Dad, I, I, I put it on the other couch. I said, well, how come you didn't say that? And he said, you were screaming. You know, you, did, you, you didn't give me an opportunity. You may have moments as a parent you're not proud of, it's easy to jump to the wrong conclusions, to overreact, or to frustrate your child. When we came home from school one day, and we always check their papers, they have their folders, and Kaylin had a report that she had failed some tests. And we had worked so hard on those tests all week, studying and making sure that she knew it. And we thought that she really knew the material, but she had failed the test. She was frustrated, and she knew that I was disappointed and in the grade that she had made. And so I was questioning her, why did you make this bad grade after all the studying that we had done? And I was at my wit's end. I did not know what else we could do to help her. I was not very kind in the way that I spoke to her. If there's a stopper for a child's emotional growth in life, it's growing up with a critical-eyed parent, a parent who can spot a flaw at 40 uh, paces. So parents, watch the critical eye. Watch the subtle things you say. Try to be as encouraging as you can to your kids. If you grew up with a critical-eyed parent, then you realize that the curse has been passed along to you. And so finding the flaws in other people stifles communication. It's a stopper. These are kids who learn to fear criticism. You see this, this mindset is you can't make a mistake and I'm saying flaunt your imperfection parents. Because as you flaunt your imperfection, you draw people closer to you. I could see by her face and her body manner, everything, she was crushed even more. And I saw it immediately and then I burst into tears and hugged her and she cried, we both cried. And I said, Kaylin, I love you. And I said, we'll get past these grades. Somehow we'll work on this. You know, the, the parents, many times they're encouraged to hear there's a second chance, but sometimes they're clueless as to where to start.
I think it goes a long way to be able to apologize to your child. I apologize to mine. Sometimes I'm in a, and I'm, I'm in a bad mood, I'm on a short fuse, um, and I snap, or, or I, I, I don't respond in a fair manner, I don't get the whole story. And it's important for me to go back and say, I messed up, okay? I didn't mean to do it, I didn't want to do it, but I'm sorry for doing it. Can we start over? Most of the time, the response you'll get from your children is yes. Okay, because we are created with a need to have a good relationship with the people that gave birth to us. They're part of us. So children are, are very, very forgiving and very, very open. Then I'll go to them even later and say, you know, mommy, mommy was not really doing a good job the other day and I said this to you and I should not have said that and I'm very sorry. And so we'll hug and, and we'll kiss and children are so forgiving. They, they forgive very quickly and easily and I know there's times they'll say, Mommy, I know. <laughs> and uh, even though I may have been feeling guilty about it for days, they, they have already forgiven me and gone on and forgotten it. Children will learn about forgiveness when they see you make mistakes and then they see you apologize. So what can we take away from the show today? First, unconditional love is the very foundation of successful parenting. Your love cannot be used as a reward for good behavior. Eye contact, physical contact, and focus attention are three great ways to convey your love. Finally, we discovered that to improve communication with your kids, you need to be a better listener. On our next show, we'll move right into punishment and discipline. How do we get our kids to do what we tell them to do? Or how do we get them to stop doing what they shouldn't be doing? We'll see you next week as we continue our series, Parenting by Heart. Hey now, you're an all-star, you game on, go play. Hey now, you're a rock star, show on, get your show on, go play. All that you and stars, a bow whoa. <laughs>